it's the morning of day four and good morning to you all yesterday was a pretty epic day we put two days work into one day the two bulls that the guys double tagged on the day before we managed to pack them out there they are all the meat the racks and everything else sat there we managed to do that in one day which for three blokes is pretty epic work we've got snow on the mountains over there which is a good sign for the moose hopefully it'll start and bring them down into the valley get them a bit more revved up ready for the rut so um all is good i think we're going to take it easy today because like i say yesterday was hard i think ian's got the coffee on and it's time i went and had one So it's day four here in paradise and hopefully a little less uh, of an active day today. Uh, yesterday was all about getting the caribou out. Mark and Steve did most of the knife work and I spent most of the day packing out. So we all did what we were pretty good at. Slept like a baby last night, so ate well, rested, and then a nice steady morning this morning. Now Cole's coming in to pick up the two caribou carcasses, the racks and the hides. So we're probably gonna spend the day glassing for moose. Moose season opens tomorrow. Uh, we haven't seen anything in the valley yet, uh, but it's worth putting the time in. And also there's quite a lot of ptarmigan uh, around camp. So what I'd like to do, is take out the Air Arms S510 TDR air rifle and shoot some time again. Bit of fresh meat to change things up a little bit. But the weather's been kind to us once again. Lovely cloud covering the sky. It's coming in colder at night. That may push the moose and the black bear back down further into the valley here. Hopefully a relaxed day. Uh, still plenty to do to keep us occupied. And hopefully we'll have some fresh time again on the stove tonight for dinner. Otherwise, we just need to get back to work and, and keep glassing. Now we've got all the gear ready for Cole to come and pick up the caribou a little bit later on. We've just seen some ptarmigan take off close to camp and then head down the water about 80, 90 yards away. Now I have got a small game license uh, for shooting uh, ptarmigan and ground squirrels if we'd seen them, a bit of fresh meat. Uh, for the burner if you like uh, and i bought with me an air arms s510 tdr and as you can see it's really compact it's lightweight the butt breaks down so you can put it into your pack and it doesn't take up too much space on top of that i've got a hawk air max 4 to 12 by 40 and that's got a tmx reticle so i've got all of my different aim points on there as well uh, so it's a nice lightweight maneuverable package as you can see it doesn't have a moderator the uk version has a removable moderator uh, they're not permitted out here in Alaska, uh, but that overall makes a nice, lightweight, manoeuvrable hunting package. And hopefully we'll be able to get a bit of fresh meat with dinner tonight. I suppose we'd better go and have a look and see if we can find any. Now you may be wondering why we're not cooking up the fresh caribou meat we harvested yesterday. As many of you will appreciate, fresh venison that hasn't been given time to age can be pretty chewy. Realistically, these bulls will need to hang for a couple of weeks before they'll be at their best. But with rock ptarmigan scurrying around everywhere, I'm fairly confident we'll be able to cook up some fresh game. However... And that's the problem when it's quite thick in. They're only about 15, 20 yards away. And as soon as you get too close, they get, get up and they go. So this is a bit thick here. We're going to head back to camp. It's a little bit more open. Uh, we can go a bit further out. I'll grab my rifle. Uh, there have been four or five grizzly bears that we've sighted around here, so need to make sure we're protected. Not too bad when you're close to camp because of the scent, uh, but the further afield you get, the more prepared you need to be. So These ones have got away for this time, but there may not be a next. Despite my epic failure at ptarmigan hunting, there's always plenty of chores to keep us busy about camp. Keeping our water supplies topped up is the top of the priority list, and we have a number of tools for this purpose. We use a bladder to collect water from the stream behind camp, which is decanted into the Catadyne base camp system that filters drinking water through a gravity system. We also use a ceramic pump filter to draw water directly from the stream and into our Nalgene bottles. Whilst the water is clean and clear, there's a distinct possibility of picking up a virus or parasite if drinking directly from the fresh water sources, so always use a filter. With our chores complete and a coffee in hand, we set about glassing the valley for signs of a moose. And so it's about 12 uh, noon, still waiting for Cole to come in. James, who's currently operating the camera that you're looking through right now, decided he was gonna have a play with some binos. Yeah, and very productive he was too. Yeah, so his first stare through at the Hawk Endurance binos up onto the side of a mountain, and he spots the first moose of the trip. Now he's looking uh, right just there, he's just kind of chewing away on some willow. Now he's a younger bull, probably about two years old. Uh, of course, moose season doesn't start till tomorrow, but it doesn't stop us from glassing the area 
uh, and seeing what's about. I'm quite surprised to see him really because we put a lot of scent in and around the valley here, killing the two bull caribou, bringing the meat back to camp, making all sorts of noise. But he seems pretty relaxed over there. Very relaxed and the wind is actually straight at him. But to see him out there, it's, um, it is quite a pleasant surprise. Yeah, well, we, we have been doing a lot of glassing and we've seen five grizzly bears, so three adults. Uh, one of those was a sow with two cubs, so that's five in total. A couple of caribou, actually the only caribou that we've seen that we, yeah. we took both of those bulls. So even though the area is huge, you think you've seen all of it, and then suddenly a giant animal like a moose pops up across the way and you know changes your perception of things. And that's why you've got to put so much time in up here. I know we're only in day four, so it's still pretty early on in the hunt and we, we spent a whole day packing out. But you've just got to be patient. Now the great thing is we've got this Hawk Endurance ED spotting scope, so 2060 by 85. So you can see the blob, you can see him through the Endurance binos, but of course, you know, he's about 1600 yards away, something like that. So to be able to get a good up close sight picture of him, you can gauge trophy size, you can gauge age. You can also have a look at the topography between here and there to plan your route. Of course, we've got a river in the way, it's still pretty high. So it's not quite able for us to wade over, but he's not the animal we're looking for anyway. But it's still pretty good to be able to see animals so early on in the hunt. So Cole's expected in sometime in the next 15 to 20 minutes. In fact, this might be him coming down the valley now. It could be him on the way. Mark is heading off now. He's got a guide job in Iliamna, which is uh, further in the south on the peninsula. We're just going to leave just you and me, mate. I think we'll be OK, won't we? But he's heard all my old stories, that's the problem. I'm going to have to make new ones up, but, but there you go. So well done, James. Congratulations on spotting your first moose. And we're going to bring you more often, I think. As soon as Cole lands, it's all hands on deck to get the Super Cub loaded up and ready to go. You do not want to keep a busy bush pilot waiting. Once he's assessed the weights of the various bags and packages, Cole sets about loading the plane. It's critical to ensure everything is loaded correctly in the right places, and getting this process right requires a lifetime of experience. Cole heads out to a local airstrip to drop the first load and will return to collect Mark and the rest of his gear before switching to the larger Maul M5 plane for the long trip back into town. <laughs> we get back to glassing and enjoy what's turned out to be a lovely, relaxing day. It's a shame to be losing Mark as we enjoy his company but in some ways it's better for us as we're now very much alone and in the driving seat without the support of an experienced Alaska guide. Cole sets about loading the Super Cub with a purposeful yet jovial demeanor. Not only is he a great pilot, but he's a huge amount of fun too. And now with the valley all to ourselves, we decide to have another attempt at the ptarmigan, this time with Steve backing me up with a rifle. This area is perfect for ptarmigan, with plenty of dense cover and insects to feed on. I can hear them, but I can't quite pinpoint their location. I move as carefully as possible through the brush, stopping periodically to scan the undergrowth with binoculars. It's just a matter of perseverance. The Vanguard B62 shooting sticks are also a useful tool here, providing a solid elevated position from which to shoot and a helping hand to support the rifle whilst I glass through the binos. And finally our patience pays off as we see a covey of birds in a shootable position. However, my shot ricochets off a small branch and the covey flies to safety. They've not gone far and I slowly make my way towards them, hoping for another chance. Frustratingly, they continue to evade my attentions.
Well, that's been a nice little walk. I was on point. We've been out for time again, and Steve was back gunning with a 300 wood mag just in case we get some grizzly bear come and catch us up. But uh, lovely afternoon, though. Yeah, nice afternoon for a stroll, isn't it? Yeah. In this little river delta here, this is normally flooded, you know, when the water's high. It makes it nice and flat, covered in insects, so it's perfect place for time again. We've seen quite a few strong coveys. It is really thick in there, isn't it? Yeah. And unfortunately, you can't really get to them before they've gone on the next extra foot. So. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Yesterday, as we were walking back, we saw a couple just running down the track in front of us. Had we had a rifle, it would have been fine, but now we're looking for them. They just seem a little bit skittish today. It's always the way, right? Once you bust them, you can see where they land and make a storm in but there's a covey back there I busted three times best thing to do then just kind of leave them you know they're too hot under the collar and there's no point in pushing them so I'm gonna go back have a coffee uh, enjoy a beautiful afternoon then maybe get out later on in the afternoon because that seems to be the time they're coming out as soon as light starts dropping that's when everything seems to come alive pretty much like back home really. and also about three in the morning because that's when we can hear them outside the tent <laughs> having a party because let me say if there's moonlight tonight I'm coming out and I'm gonna quite a few of them down well thanks for looking after us anyway mate much no appreciated problem. no problem I'll make coffee how's that sound that's a good idea let's go okay. But it's not long before we're back up the ridge, scouring the slopes for a giant bull moose. It's a team effort as Steve scans the slope with his binos, pointing out shapes and shadows for me to investigate with a Hawk Endurance ED spotting scope. We've not yet found our holy grail, but as we're taking in the magnificence of this place, we can't think of anywhere else in the world we'd rather be right now. So, the end of day four, and it's been pretty busy, but I suppose slightly relaxed. It's been a funny day, hasn't it? We've been flat out at mid times, and then we've been chilled at other times. It's been a nice day, though. I needed it after yesterday, bringing those two caribou out the mountains, and we finished quite late. Even walking up here, I felt it in my thighs again. Yeah. And it's been hard work yesterday was, wasn't it? It was, and it's you know very sad that Mark's left us now. He's headed off back into town. Obviously, his main source of income is guiding. It was great to spend the day with him yesterday, getting his first caribou. Yeah, I'm so glad he did get hill. his caribou. Yeah, yeah. It looks like this valley's been hit pretty hard though. We've seen a few moose across there earlier on today, but nothing in this valley here. So tomorrow what we'd like to do is kind of head over towards the mountains behind us. Now, unfortunately the wind is blowing this way, which is a bit of a pain. But once we get up on that ridge behind us, the valley beyond should open up and we'll see if we can see anything over there. With this airstrip just here, it's an ideal place for locals to kind of have a bit of a fly around, that's drop a, in. That's the trouble, the drop hunters on a weekend, off again, ready back for work, aren't yeah. they? We prefer somewhere a little bit more remote. It just makes it a little bit more difficult to get to and therefore the animals will be under less pressure. Even the ptarmigan here seem a bit skittish, they don't want to get shot. So we've, we've been up here, had a bit of a glass round, nothing showing at the moment. Still, the weather's beautiful though, so it's going to be a nice, calm but cold evening. I feel it's kind of it turning. Is, it, yeah, you can feel the chill in the wind again now. Well, at least we've had a look. We've got a plan for tomorrow. I've got to go and cook dinner. Yes, you have. And then maybe early to bed. I think so. You know, mouth cold just doesn't carry far enough. Yeah. There's a lot of food here, Stephen. Mm. 